what's been happening with the Volvo 740? If you remember in the last video, she failed the MOT. But luckily, it was literally on one thing, and that was a seat belt and the buckle and the lap belt for the rear. Managed to get one of those. Um, my other half, my partner in crime, my sidekick, <laughs> the 50% of UK barn finds Claire, she went away. Um, that arrived literally an hour after she went. And if you follow us or subscribe to us on YouTube, you may have seen I did a little short with it. So if you didn't subscribe or if you haven't, you're missing out. Um, that's literally a 16 mil bolt, bolted that in, took it down to fast test. Good as gold they were, they squeezed me in. Retest done. So I've been out and about in the Volvo and um, doing a, a few little journeys here and there. Excellent, you've put a few miles on then. We'll come back to that, there is a slight issue, I'll explain that later. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's always an issue Claire, you know, <laughs> there is always. an old car and it's me. Um, but no, I've been able, but running wise it's been fine, I'm quite confident in the car, it feels better than a lot of cars of that era compared to sort of modern cars, you don't feel vulnerable, you don't feel um, like you're going to break down every two minutes, which I better cross my fingers now because we're about to jump in here, stick the child seat in the back and go as a family to a little local car show. So if we can, we'll grab a few pics and maybe a bit of video whilst we're there and take the Volvo out on its first family journey with us. One thing I forgot to mention, Timpsons came good. Went over to Asda, their little shop there. They're great there. Um, they had a blank. So we have a spare key now, which I've actually been using as the main key because the original was so thin, it was really worn, which I, after so many miles, I'm not surprised. What I want to do before we leave, I've just nicked your phone charger out of your car. All right, thanks for telling me. Yeah, and we're gonna test whether this one works, because as we found before, it's a problem when we don't have 12 volt power, because everything seems to run off it for us. These, what the heck? Right. I need to turn that key. Please, please work. Oh, you've killed my car, Claire. I don't think that's working. God's sake, we have got a load of fuses in them here, I noticed. But we've got enough charge for today, so let's not worry about that. It's not the end of the world. Okay, let's go. Idea. <laughs> yes, which is why we have the phone backup. <laughs> <laughs> so it started working again, look. No way. So th this is one of the things I've noticed, or one of the, yeah, one of the things. Whilst you're away, the dash, there are issues. Um, that's one of them. Look, it's gone again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of them. Um, the petrol gauge. We have actually got a full tank, it's showing full at the moment, but a minute ago it was showing three quarters, earlier it was showing half. It just shows whatever it wants really, so until that's sorted I'm just going to have to make sure the car's always brimmed. The temperature gauge seems fine. The clock works, because I set that and it is yeah, 11 o'clock bang on now and it's 11 o'clock bang on on the clock there. Um, but the biggest issue and I, I alluded to this earlier when I um, told you there may be an issue, is um, the odometer, the counting up the miles, does not work. It's been the same for the last two MOTs. So this car possibly has already been to the moon and back. All the miles I've done so far, including today, don't count because we can't track them. You and I, and perhaps the people watching this, if they want to comment, have got a decision to make. Do I try and sort the clocks out, 
or do we come up with uh, I've seen that there are various apps or even just we could just use pen and paper do we track our mileage like that I don't want to get too involved in ripping the car apart and um, potentially making it worse um, I'd, I, personally I'd be more inclined to just either get an app or pen and paper I don't know what you would do Claire what would you think um, what? I'd want to actually replace the dash that yeah. would be my view but well you can do that then <laughs> yes. there is there are options because um, turn of events last week when I was getting the lap belt I ended up chatting to some friends in a local car group who've put me on to various people. And one of them um, is a guy who bagger races Volvos. And um, I know some people don't like bagger racing. I've got nothing against it. Um, and because of that, obviously there's lots of these interiors that he doesn't need. So I may, if I can, arrange to go and meet this guy and see what bits he's gonna do. Because there's loads of bits in here if we're gonna do th things like that. Um, I don't wanna, go too into it at the moment, but there's bits of trim that have sort of, I mean, that can probably just be stuck back on here, bits of trim. The door here, that, that could either be glued, I don't know if you can see that, I don't want to take my hand off the steering wheel, obviously. Um, things like that, it's just showing signs of, like, you know, the amount of massive use it's had, uh, whether it's worth seeing if we can get a few of those bits. Certainly if their price is cheap enough, we'll get them anyway, and even if we don't fit them, when we sell the car, we'll leave them in the boot for the next owner and it'll be up to them then. That sounds like an idea, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I did look, the, uh, do you remember in the first video when you played with my knob on the glove box? Yeah. And um, it broke. Oh. Uh, uh, so. Okay, it's a good job I love you. It is really. Uh, no, that's, these things happen, don't worry. I'm sure some, oh. Uh, uh. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll okay, tell you what. I'll tell you what. Just... Fall a bit. And bits are not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I had a look at another car in the scrapyard, and the exact same thing happened in there. So that's obviously a common thing. So if we could ever find one that's not broken, it'd be a bonus. But no, there's just these little things that we need to sort. But the most important, because the whole idea of this series of videos is that we're going to try and take this car 20,000 miles more than it has done already is that we need to find a way of recording the mileage. So think on that one. And if you're watching this and we haven't done it yet, um, comment below, what would you do? We're trying to have fun. We're not, we, you know, this isn't something we want to spend a whole hour of our life fixing and breaking and refixing. So what would you do with a car like this if you just wanted to record 20,000 miles on it? And we will get it serviced some point soon some people are probably cringing now because i've just jumped in it and driven it but ooh, where's the fun if i don't take a few risks for you guys claire was asking me about overdrive because i've never had a car with overdrive and nor has she so all it is basically this is four gears on the stick as the uh, our american cousins would say and um there's a button in the middle so when we got up to a speed that's sort of like where you'd want to change to fifth I just press that button, which we'll do as soon as we get on a straight bit of road around the corner here. Let's say here, look. Press that, and you'll feel the car change into fifth gear, basically. I'm not a mechanic of a great skill, so I don't know exactly what goes on underneath there, but I think some Oompa Loompas are sort of primed and they're ready when you hit that button, they put another cog somewhere. But you've got fifth gear, basically, and you've got a little five comes up on the dash. When you change down gear, that will come off overdrive, or you can, if you want, press the button again and you'll drop back down into fourth. But that's all working, which is a bonus. The clutch on this car is quite high. I'm not going to change that or bother about it. Um, for us, it's here to do this 20,000 miles, so we'll just see if it does it or not. If it, if it needs a clutch in those 20,000 miles, it'll get a clutch. But at the moment, I'm not going to touch anything like that. There you have it, we're nearly there. on an old airfield. World War II one. This was an American airbase. 
And there are some other cars. We'll stick it in the car park because sometimes if you're into a car show, you're committed. But I suppose we could just go over there, couldn't we? Sod it. It's off road. Everyone else is. Let's have a look around then. So we made it, or well, the Volvo made it. It's only about a 25 minute journey, but when you've got a new old car, it's, uh, we count that as a success. We've come to Debich Airfield in Suffolk, 493rd Bomb Group. It's like a private museum for American Airbase. And every now and again, they open it up and have a few retro, classic and vintage cars here. So we've parked up have a wander around, bite to eat, and um, just enjoy the place. It's so relaxed, it's really chilled, and um, yeah, it's just gonna be an, a great first trip as a family in what is, so far, a great car. made it. It wasn't exactly a massive journey, about 20 miles each way and a stop on the way back to get some shopping, but it was a great test for us as a family to go out in the car. Nice to see some other cars, nice to feel a part of that community because I've been a part of that community for a long time and you never know with another car what it's going to feel like. Never got that same love with our Jaguar XK8. The Volvo just slots in there seamlessly. Um, few questions along the way I've been asking it'd be lovely to see your comments below 
about how we're going to record mileage, should we go about doing up the trim, this, that and the other. Um, like I say, comment below, let us know. Let us know your thoughts on the car. We hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to plan some bigger journeys now, um, try and go to a few events, do a few other things, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.